Pressure is what made me. That's why I am a fighter, because I love pressure. I sacrificed everything to be the best of what I was doing. Now I look where I am. I've been building myself to this. I'm ready to go out there and pick up another win. I'm number five in the world, and nobody can take that away from me, but I don't want to be number five. I want to be C. I want to have that C next to my name. I want to be the guy that they're all looking up to. They want to fight next. I'm not going to stop until I'm that guy. It was freezing. This place? The best jewelry store in the city. If it ain't from VBS King, it's Fugazi. <laughs> it's a Fugazi. I'm looking for something that you know I could, I could wear as I'm wearing sweats or a suit. This one right here is ultra lightweight, brother. You'll you'll meet your weigh-in weight, bro. With this one. <laughs> Dane, I need a little bit, another main event, and then I, maybe I can get this one right here. But we're looking at this one right here. I feel like I've overcome a lot of my life. A lot of Middle Eastern guys, a lot of family members, they all worked in stores. They knew that it, they're going straight from high school to working in a store. Me saying, yo, I want to try to be an athlete. I don't have no athletes in my family. Nobody in my family played any sports. This is trap season, though. He's getting the gold for the wrist first, then he'll finish the year with the gold on the waist. I didn't have no previous martial arts background. I didn't start MMA until I was in my 20s. I said gold, gold is the goal. You had the naysayers and the doubters. That's a statement piece right there. Who are you to think that you could make it to the UFC? Who are you to think that you could be a champion? But uh, whatever you put your mind to, whatever you grind to, anything is possible. And that's really it with me. That was a nice one right there. Yeah, I like that one, yeah. Hussein is my older brother, my best friend. You know, he believed in me before I believed in myself. Dude, that one in the right, the right hand one is hot. Yeah, right. I like that blue. That blue face is real nice. He never had experience with fighting or anything like that. We'll come to my practices and see how the coach is holding pads for me. And then we'll be up at night, middle of midnight, yo, hey, let's go hold pads. Let's go try to hold pads. And those little things help me to sharpen my tools and get better with myself. That looks like the one right there. I just had to keep pushing. I had to keep believing in myself. I had to keep having the, my people around me, my family around me that kept pushing me and telling me that it's gonna work, it's gonna work out, you're doing the right thing. And all those things came together. Well, I got your account on the phone. He's oh, good for us. He's good? Yeah, I just wanna say what up. Yo, this is like Entourage where the, where the guy's like, dude, what the fudge, you get the fudge out of there right now. All right, now we're good. All right, talk to you later. All right, cool. <laughs> Come on, 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 come on. There he is. There you go. Oh, nice. That was a good one. There you go. Great body kick, dude. Nice. Finish, 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 finish. Climbing up that ladder, it was, it was a hard ladder to climb because I, I took the hard road. Good. Round and pound, light pepper, light pepper. Fighters, sometimes they'll come in, they get in two to three wins, and it's like they're on that superstar level right away. Time, switch. And you're looking at it, you always tell yourself, like, why is this guy getting the shine? I'm better than this guy. But, you know, God has a plan for everybody, and that I always kept telling myself like that. Like, don't be jealous, don't be jealous. You know, your time's gonna come, it's gonna happen for you. Now that it's actually starting to happen, it's starting to come, uh, it just feels like a blessing. Get him biting on your things. Get him biting on your things. He don't know when it's real. He don't know when it's fake. This year has been my best year. One of those years where now I feel like people are actually starting to realize who I am and what I can be. What a stage for Bilal Muhammad. This is one of those moments that this young man has dreamt about. The Leon fight was a, a huge opportunity for me. Leon Edwards is the absolute top of the food chain. And if Bilal Muhammad can get the job done, he will find himself amongst the best. Fight. I get to be the main event. I get to go against number three in a row. The guy that they're talking about is going to fight for the title next. So I beat him. I skipped everybody. So you get in there and, you know, you get eye poked. Stop! 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 Oh. What? Oh. 
What the heck? Like, why? Oh, it was a poke in the eye. Listen, let me tell you, the pain is like nothing else. Fuck! That's bad, dude. He's done. Blah, blah, relax and breathe. He's needs, the doctor needs to take a look at it. Have you seen double? I can't see anything. I can't see anything. He's done. Mm -hmm. He's done. Fuck! <laughs> Herb Dean officially waves it off. You can see the pain and the agony. The way that the fight ended, it like shattered me a little bit. I, I did all of this. I, I, my whole career was for this one moment. And I felt like I blew my opportunity. But being religious, being a Muslim, it's like everything's already written. I had to just embrace that. And then like, yo, let me get, I need another fight. I need to get this taste out of my mouth right away. Muhammad very bullish and excited about his welterweight future if he can get past this challenge tonight. Then they call me with uh, Damian Maya, a legend in the sport, a guy that's fought for the title twice, a guy that everybody knows his name. You get through Damian Maya, you got some bragging rights. The pressure and the pace of Muhammad is really a sight to behold. Just amazing takedown defense in this fight. Bilal Muhammad! And you would be wise to remember the name Bilal Muhammad. Moving on up in the welterweight division. I just beat Damian Maya. It's a guy that I've always looked up to, a guy that I've always watched, and it just proved myself that I'm in the right spot with my team and the guys around me. The dark horse lurking in the shadows in the welterweight division. After beating Damian Maya, my manager called me, he's like, we're gonna get somebody top five. I was like, oh, you say top five? Who? He's like, Wonder Boy. And I was like, really? I came from the fighting the best grappler to now the best striker in the division. Wow, oh, no this way. is huge for Muhammad. Wow, Thompson's in a world of trouble here. You beat a guy that, like that, you beat him more dominantly than anybody's ever beaten him. Still not getting the respects. I feel like I've been overlooked, but it's okay. <laughs> well, Damian Maya is old. Oh, well, Wonder Boy's on his way out. All we gotta do is keep winning. They can't deny you if you keep winning. Give it your feet. Everybody who's beaten the guys that he has beaten has fought for the title. So to act like he's not in that title top two, top three in the world contention is disrespect. But what does disrespect do? Disrespect fuels you. Yes. I wanna go in there, I wanna dominantly finish him where they can't deny me a title shot, they can't deny that I'm next in line. I wanna skip in line in front of Leon Edwards. I wanna skip in line in front of all these guys with a, such a big win where they can't let anybody get in front of me. There's no more afters. After this, I'm gonna be next in line. Drifting is basically trying to control your car when it's out of control. That reminds me of how fighting is because you're always at the limit. You're right at the edge. If you lose control, that can be it. Lights out for you. If you just let your emotions go or you get scared, everything's gonna go wrong. I gotta be able to control that so that I keep on, on doing what I gotta do and don't crash the car. Or in a fight, I don't get knocked out. I love adrenaline, that's why I'm a fighter and this is a new adrenaline for me. It gives me that rush from my first fight, so it's awesome. <laughs> Brasilia is my hometown. I wasn't born here, but I feel like I was. I'm originally born in New Jersey, USA. That's where I lived until I was about six to seven years old. After that, my mom and my dad got divorced. My mom decided to move back to Brazil. Vai! Vai, 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 marado, 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 bora! Marado, vai, 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 vai! My mom, she also has a background in sports. She's a black belt in karate. At three years old, I used to go with her, you know, to the dojo and, and train. Growing up, I never had another interest, you know, besides fighting. And eventually, I, I decided that that was going to be what I did for a living, and, and I knew how serious I had to take that. All my life, all my focus was on being a fighter. 
I uh, sacrificed everything else to do one single thing and to become a fighter and to be the best of what I was doing. I've been working with Vicente almost 14 years as a person. He's a really, really nice guy. But as a fighter, Vicente is so aggressive. Silent Assassin, it's his nickname. He's not the guy that's trash talking. You know, he can show the people that he can be himself and knock people out. I might be overlooked as a fighter because I never built, let's say, a hype train for myself. And that's just not who I am, you know. My work is done inside the cage, and that's where I show everything that I have. That's where I show all my skills and all my abilities. I know that I'm going to become a champion, and that's going to be my legacy as a champion. The silent assassin Vicente Luque, he fights loud. Drops the breeze, and that will do it in the first round. Oh, Vicente catches him. Luke trying to close the oh, show. Turner's that's out. It. He's out. He's out. Vicente Luke does it wow. again. Wow. Oh. Right. Huge right hand over the top for Vicente. Oh, my goodness. Luke hurt him bad. Oh, right hand over the top. That was crazy. Beautiful job by Vicente Luque. Oh, he's a real contender now. You cannot ignore Vicente Luque anymore. My next fight is an interesting fight because we faced each other before. I was ready for a tough fight, and I was able to pick up a first-round knockout. And that definitely was a big changing point in my career, where everybody saw the kind of power I possess. That's my best. But I definitely look at this fight as a new fight. We have to be prepared for a new guy. Forget that fight. He's not the same as before. I expect a different Velo because he's a really good strategist. He wants Vicente to be tired, so we are prepared for that. It's the first time that Vicente is going to fight five rounds. This is really good for Vicente. We have been training like seven rounds, eight rounds, and he can do it very well. He needs to dominate this fight. If you see Vicente every day, you can see that he's a red champ. He's not kidding. I think Bilal fights uh, with a lot of pressure and he utilizes his wrestling game really well to tire off his opponents. On the opposite side, I walk down my opponents and just try to knock them out. So I think it's a fight where we're both going to try to impose our will. It's definitely potential for one of the best fights of the night or of the whole year. I'm always on the rise. I'm always trying to, to become a champion and this is the next step. So going out there and beating him is, is gonna put me in the position to become a champion. So warm up on your bike. My dad's about to go through one of the, the Lewis Taylor workouts. Senior citizen version. Senior citizen version. Anybody's ever wanted to a Lewis Taylor workout, they, they haven't been the same. Poor guy doesn't even know what's about to happen to him right now. He got a smile on his face. I think it's about to be fun. <laughs> They're trying to get me into shape. <laughs> Growing up, my dad had a cell phone store. We had the store for uh, 15 years. When uh, the George Floyd riots happened, the store got demolished, set on fire. It was going to be way too much money to bring it back. Now he just, he basically works for me. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. Come on, come on, turn him, turn him. Come on, turn him. He considers himself a part-time coach. Turn, turn, there we go. Uh, yeah, he'll give me his advice. And it's always like, hit him to the body, hit him to the body. And my dad's never done any martial arts. My dad never played any sports in his life. Even though he may not know what he's talking about, just the fact that he's trying, it just means a lot to me. I didn't realize how much work he actually puts into it. Because, you know, it's not too often that I get a chance to see him in a setting like this, he'll come and sit at home for about an hour and then he's gone again. Where are you going? Gone in session two. <laughs> or then it's like, you're gone again for session three. I'm like, dude, come on, take a break. You know, but he says, no, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep, get better, get better, get better. 
Honestly, it was a blessing in disguise that we got rid of the store because now he's more concentrated in his health. Now he's more around with the family. Now he can come to my practices. His first fight that he's ever been to was my Damian Maya fight. That was good. Just to have that support and to just hear him cheering and stuff like that, it's like, it's like a real fight scenario, especially like the apex, because there's nobody in there. So you're hearing every little thing. And then when you get a cheer from your dad, you're like, all right, it gives you a little bit more motivation. It's just a cool experience now because he was never able to do that before. He's never able to get that time with me. That time is precious. In the end, it's only you and your family. Those are the only ones that are gonna be with you 100% no matter what happens. You know, I lost my third fight in the UFC to Luque. Fight at Madison Square Garden, the most iconic arena that anybody could ever fight in. My opponent pulled out a couple weeks before the fight, and then they gave me this new opponent, Luque. Was that? That's it. That's it. It is all over. Wow. Just like that. I had so many people show up. What the fudge? The thing I remember most is waking up and I'm walking backstage and then uh, I look over and I'm talking to my brother. And I was like, I never want to have my brother in my corner after that. I don't want him to have to see me like that or her like that. So then you're sitting there on a bus ride and you're like, man, do I belong here? Am I not good enough? Now I lost two fights in the UFC. And you get knocked out and you're like, what the, like, why did, why did this happen? I'm better than this. I'm, I'm not this guy that they, the, the world probably thinks right now. Mentally, it was, it was just hard. Having my family, like I wouldn't have been where I am today without them. Sometimes you need that extra motivation from the people around you telling you that, Stop it, you're gonna make it. Get that negative energy out of your head and uh, it's all gonna come together. Boom, jab, jab, bud. Ha, ha, jab, jab, cross it. There's no straight road, there's no straight path. That fight changed me forever because it leveled me up. We need to change our mindset, only get better from here. This is never gonna happen again. I'm never gonna have this feeling again. And it's only made me a better fighter from there. For me, I always wanted that fight back. I always wanted it one more chance. Six years later, going full circle, going 10 and one since that fight. Now I feel like I earned this shot. I'm gonna prove myself this fight because I'm a way different fighter. And if he comes in here thinking that I'm the same guy, it's gonna be a long night for him. It's gonna be a terrible night for him. Bento. Bento. Cadê o papai? Vou dar pro papai. Oh, papai. Oh. Wow! É o pato. Um, dois, três e. Ai, meu Deus. My wife, Carol, we met really young. We met in high school. From the first day, you know, that I saw her, I knew that she was the woman of my life. And I decided, you know, together with my dream of being a champion in the UFC, my other dream is to build a family with this woman. And 2021, our first son, Bento, was born. A gente é novo, mas a gente tem uma história muito grande aí por trás já. E como esposo, como namorado, ele já sempre foi, sei lá, muito, muito incrível. Mas agora, como pai, ele tá me surpreendendo até. You got the duck, baby boy. Quack, quack, quack. Eu acho que não tem, não tem nada que ele faça que não fale, ah, mas o Bento pensa muito no futuro do Bento. Logicamente, né, como pai, pais, a gente sempre quer o melhor para os nossos filhos. It's special to have a son. Shows me how I can be a much better version of myself than I already am, than I already believe I can be. And it's just more, more motivation for me to reach all my goals, chase all my dreams, and, and conquer everything that I want to conquer. Ah, com certeza o vento está crescendo, tatame. Tatame em si passa muitos valores, né? É bons, positivos. Para criança, principalmente, eu vejo pelo Vicente, ele, ele nasceu no tatame. E sim, se eu, se eu puder passar pelo menos o, a metade do que, o Vicente, do que eu vejo do Vicente para o Bento, então não vejo problema dele estar no tatame, não. Aí. Tudo 
Hi. How are you? Good. My mom, she is, you know, uh, an amazing woman. She comes to every single sparring session of mine. She watches, she films me. We talk about, you know, what's going on. And even though I, I don't like to hear it all the time, sometimes she says things that make sense. And I'm like, man, I can't believe my mom, you know, she hasn't been fighting for so long and she still can tell me some good advice. My mom, she raised me. She taught me about honor, persistence, focus, and pursuing your dream. And I think that without uh, her and what she taught me, I wouldn't be what I am right now. Vamos começar a achar ele. Vamos começar a quebrar o psicológico dele. Bora. De novo. Bora. Deixa ele levantar. Bora. I'm proud of my son. It's going to be an awesome fight. He's preparing beautifully, looking good, strong. He's stronger every month. Like I, I really see a big ad advance in that. It's a great opponent, which which I always want Vicente to fight the best because that's what he's searching for, to be the best, right? And him being with family makes him very, very strong. The hard work pays off. He's, he's doing good. I don't know if it's a good or bad rematch for Bilal. You know, he's grown a lot as an athlete. He picked up a whole bunch of good wins. I have, have grown as an athlete, and I picked up a whole bunch of good wins. I do believe I'm going to get the win. I do believe I have the tools to beat him. Every single minute I'm inside that octagon, I'm looking for ways to put my opponent out. It's just who I am. I was born like this. I'm here to knock people out or, or submit them. There's nothing more important than that belt. I gotta be the champion. I will be the champion, and to be able to bring that belt home to my family, to my parents, to my brothers, it just means a lot to me. I want my dad to walk into the mosque with a belt on his shoulder. That's what I wanna have. My ultimate goal as a fighter is to become a legend. I not only wanna be a champion, but I also wanna be remembered as one of the best champions, one of the greater champions. I'm just at the beginning of what I can do. I'm sure that I'll see many challenges ahead, but I'm going to face them and conquer everything that I want to conquer. I'm trying to build my legacy. <laughs>